Hi, my name is Gaurav Galut and I welcome you to this video from quickdevnotes.com. Today we will be talking about lazy initialization. However, if you are not familiar with dependency injection and concepts, I would highly recommend to visit my previous videos where we talked about dependency injection, problems associated with a tightly coupled application and how we can write unit tests around our decoupled application. First have a look at our application which is loosely coupled and is using dependency injection but we will see how we can optimize our application by making use of lazy initialization and let's get started. So here we are back in Visual Studio. Let's first have a look at our application. At line number 10 what I'm doing is and that I'm initializing my DI container. I'm using Autofact and uh, if you're not familiar with DI containers or Autofact check out my video on dependency injection using Autofact and you will get all the clarity I'm sure. Then we are initializing a scope and basically what a scope means is that your application starts uh, at this point of time at this line number 13 and every single thing that you resolve here will be basically inside one scope and when the scope is out of memory every single component that was resolved in this uh, scope will be disposed well it's a completely different topic and it's a huge topic to talk about so we will not, not be talking about this and in this video but definitely in a separate one later okay so i have a very basic bootstrapper class which does nothing much but starts my app uh, the bootstrapper has two dependencies one is on i task manager and a random service that does nothing much then my entry point for the whole application would be uh, from main to the start app which takes some input and based on the input uh, com being compared with a constant value that is again input I initialize my task manager and perform some task okay very simple and if I run it you will not see anything fancy but two line of output okay so the application looks quite fine so far not no problem at all it's extensible so if I want to add a new functionality to this bootstrapper or then all, all I have to do is implement that functionality as a different service or a component and add it using dependency injection Let's have a closer look at our application and see what exactly happens when we start our application. So let's get back to program first. When we are asking our scope or IDI container to resolve bootstrapper, it will first go and check what are the dependencies for this bootstrapper. It will go and see that okay, my bootstrapper has a dependency on iTaskManager and iRandomService. So it will, it will go to find out the implementation classes for iTaskManager and see I have a task manager class which implements iTaskManager and this itself has a dependency on three different services service 1, 2 and 3. The container will now try to find out if these services service 1, 2 and 3 do they have any sort of dependencies on other components and if I go to the implementation class service 1 does not have a dependency service 2 also does not have a dependency and service 3 as well does not have any further dependencies so the the DI container will give me an object for task manager after it has created or instantiated service 1 2 and 3 then it will go for I random service uh, I random service also does not have any dependency so the object will be created and once all the dependencies are resolved the container will create an instance of a bootstrapper and provide it to the program class which means at line 13 okay so we are good so far if I look at my bootstrapper then uh, these dependencies are my direct dependencies so there are few people which might not agree with me but there are basically two types in which I can categorize my dependencies like direct dependencies and indirect dependencies. Let's assume we have a component as main component which is dependent upon three different services. The direct dependency means that we cannot create an object of main component until and unless service A, B and C are resolved. In order to create an instance or instantiate our main component, we have to have 
are a b c class instantiated on the other hand if i say that my main component is indirectly dependent upon service c this means that if at any point of time i want to instantiate my main component i don't really need service c all i need is a and b so basically an uh, indirect dependency means that you will be using service c at some point of time in your uh, component but it's not really required that you have it in memory while you're trying to create your main component now let's have a look at our application and see how this scenario of uh, indirect dependency fit in our application so if we look closely in our startup method then we are saying that if in input is uh, equivalent to some constant value then perform some task otherwise we don't need our task manager we are not actually using it somewhere at least for now then uh, what is the use of instantiating our task manager right at that point of instantiating bootstrapper we can delay the initialization of task manager until and unless we reach at this point so what this means is if i go to my program class and provide some faulty input so you see um, at this point this if condition will definitely fail because the input is not uh, equivalent to the constant value so which means i have in memory two objects task manager and random service object with and the task manager itself is contain is composed of three different objects so it is quite a big object and in a real life time scenario in a real life application an enterprise application we often see objects that are composed of multiple objects and if one such object is an indirect dependency for your component it's really not a good idea to instantiate that object right at the initialization of your component so uh, what we can do here is that we can leverage lazy initialization let's try and do that In order to use lazy initialization in our application or in any application, all you need to do is to mark your dependencies as lazy. So let's go and do that and now we can use lazy. And instead of directly accessing the do task method from the task manager, we now need to add value dot do task. So you will see how what this value uh, contains and how it works uh, but let's first run our application and see what the difference it has created now if i take a look at the dependencies uh, that we have in our bootstrapper we have a random service and task manager so uh, random service has been initialized and it has an actual object but if i look at my task manager the structure has changed a bit is value created property tells you whether the object has been initialized or not so because it is false this means that the task manager has not yet been initialized and the value will hold the object itself so at this line of code this if condition is going to fail and therefore will not never be creating our task manager object and we have actually saved the whole chain reaction which would have triggered because we were creating an instance of task manager so let's go ahead and change something in our program so that we actually use the task manager let's see how the value is being created now at this point the value is not yet created is value created is still false it is this line line number 26 at which the value will be created and task manager will actually actually be initialized so as you can see now once i have used dot value i now have an actual object so the is value created is now set to true and value is having the actual object that i had which was required by my bootstrap i know this is a very basic example and and the whole intention was to just give a gist how we can utilize lazy initialization in our applications so that we can uh, delay the initializations of objects that are not really required for our components at the initial stage it's 
up to you how to utilize it it may definitely vary based on the different scenarios in your application but it's it's a good practice to start by identifying your direct dependencies and indirect dependencies so that's all from my end and if you like the video please give it a thumbs up if you have any suggestions for me please drop your comments and if you don't want to miss any further videos don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell thank you so much have a good day